Hello guys, welcome to the channel, it's Kane here. In this specific video, I'm gonna show you how to use the component called list wheel. Through using list wheel, we will do add, remove, list, and finally uh, delete and update operations. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to find the list view component on the side panel in the toolbar and I'm going to drag and drop in here. Just by doing so though, you will uh, need to uh, modify some of the components of the list view in order to make it alive. So there are three important components that we need to focus on here. You can reach these through either right clicking, going into the properties and changing them these are grid lines right to left and finally uh, the columns uh, sorry view these are the three components that you need to change so let's make first the view to details the other two components are false by default so we're gonna change them to true once you have done this, you will see on your uh, list view some grid lines. It will actually list everything from uh, the, the, in the full rows and finally uh, the list view that we're going to see will be in details. An alternative approach to this is actually double clicking on your uh, the form and you can actually write these down uh, manually. So it is possible once you have given a name to your list view so let's go down and give it a name so where is it in here we saw, uh, found the list view so I'm just gonna name it as my list view and once we have done this uh, we're gonna go back and you can double click on the form load now you can name those properties. You can type as weep, which is weep.details. So we had grid lines, which is true. And we also had full row select, which is also true. So you can write them down, like in here, which will automatically trigger when the form is load, or you can right click on your list view, go to properties and change them from the properties. Either of these approaches will work. It is suggested that you don't do both because that will re result um, excessive code in the, in the form. So you either do this, change them in the properties or write the code. It is up to you which one you wanna follow. Once we have done it, since I have done the properties, I'm just going to close this one. Once we have done this, we need to basically uh, add columns to our list view so that there would be some titles that we can see on our list view. So to do that, I'm going to go into the list view, just again to the form mode and write down the columns. So it's going to be my list view dot column, columns dot at and we can give any name to the first column i'm just going to name this as id and leave some space in terms of pixel that will be a hundred and align it it is suggested that you use horizontal alignment which is triggered automatically and make sure that they are centralized which i'm going to say uh, center now we are going to do the second part which is basically you can copy paste now and put two other columns underneath this the second column can be named as name and the third column can be named as surname you can also leave some more space now since this will occupy more space than the id you can give uh, some more space here just to make sure that name and surname will fit into the list. Now that you have finished this, you can save and run it. 
we can now see that ID, name and uh, surname will be visible. We need to expand this or shrink it down a bit so that we'll be able to see it. So it's up to you how to deal with it. We can go also alternatively, change this and perhaps change the properties for the font size because it's currently too small. We can make it Verdana and 11. Now once we have done it, we can build up the solution and we can see ID, name and surname visible there. You can adjust the size according to how you want to display your list view and make sure that it fits uh, to show all columns. A little bit smaller on this side and it fits perfectly now. So we have the columns, they are there, but we don't have uh, the rows yet. So that's the next stage that we need to add some rows to it. To add a row, we will create something called as list view item. And every single list view item will indicate a row in the list view. Using that list view item, we'll add sub items to it. So let's get started. In order to add it, I'm going to go down here. For now, I'm going to write it in there. Later, I will change its place, but for now, I'll keep the list view exercise, uh, the statements underneath the form load. So this is going to be list view item, and each row that I'm going to type should be in here. List view item. And this will indicate basically uh, the name of the first, the very first component. In this case, let's say one. Now that I have this, each row can be actually uh, added with more uh, components. So we can go into there, we can say this view item again. And then we'll use this view item dot this view sub item. Once you have selected the sub item, you can give it a name and we can put information there. So it's gonna be this view sub item again, and it will be added to a specific row. In this case, when I add the sub item, I should indicate that it goes to each row, and I should also write what it is. So in this case, I'm just going to type my name there. You can also add as many as you like, but currently we define only three columns, so I'm going to add three. So the first one is the ID, which is one. The second one is the name, which is my name, and the third one will be my surname. And I'm just going to name it as surname, and I'm going to add it in here. Now that we have done this, that the sub items are ready, you can actually add them to the row itself. So you can say something like each row dot sub items. Add. The first one will be name, the second one will be surname. Now that we have done this, we, all we have to do is to add this to the entire list. So we're going to add these items the entire list view. And so this means that each row should go to the list view. So what we did in here is that we added the columns itself. The columns are up, they appear at the top. And then underneath it, we add a component list view item called each row with the number one indicating the ID and then we added name and surname and finally we merge name and surname with the uh, row itself so that it will be added as a as one row into the list view. 
So running this application now, we're going to see that my name, my surname and my ID, they are placed in there. Doing this over and over again, however, is a very repetitive and not very efficient process. So it is not suggested that you do this under the form load, but it is better if we actually create a specific function to do this. So I'm going to come down and create a function. I'm going to say something like add to this table. And this will be void. Because the ID is going to be an auto number, it is possible that you go up into the class itself. So you can define this in here as an integer. Come up, integer, auto ID. And this is by default 1. And each time I add it, it will be increasing by, increasing by 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste all of this add to list view and just put string name and string survey. Within this function now we will have the list view itself. So putting in there now instead of the list view item 1 I'm just going to put the auto ID. So copy paste this here. So that each time this one increases we have the row name that's called the row name and row surname these are the row name and row surname and instead of my name i'm just going to pass the name argument whatever that is entered by the user and the surname argument in here Finally, we need to make sure that each row contains the row name, also row surname. Once these are done, you can add the each row to the list. All you have to do now is to come here and call the function. We can call it as add to list view and give it any name. My name. Once each row is added, don't forget to uh, basically increase the auto number, auto ID plus plus. You can omit this, I only put it because I refer to this class, so it is in here uh, that is placed, it is a private value, uh, and it is uh, here and under the class that it was referred, so each time this will increase. Now that I find this, I'll make sure that it's private so that it will be increased each time and I can write multiple components here just by calling this function to add multiple data so I'm just gonna call the second person John Brown and the third person Anita So now that we have these values, let's try to run it and see what it does. So I'm going to basically run this application. And you can see in here that all the data that we currently had with the road is actually placed in there. And we can actually click on them to select the data. So this part handles add to list view. You can even expand this by basically designing a form component for adding data so you can simply expand this you can put a group box here and a series of components to basically add inside so let's just name this as add to the screen and we can go in here and select the properties so I'm just going to call this Verdana uh, and when you go to the design I will have to drag down a label 
and also text on the text box, not the text view. So this one would be a uh, name. So let's just name this as name. it up there notice that we will not ask for the user to enter an ID because the ID is an auto increment number so we don't have to ask it and we're gonna do the surname as well so we're gonna come in here nice if we have a button as well just so we can click in and add more components so we can drag and drop in here and we can say add to list this is gonna be add to list and I will name it as button add so I can make it smaller bigger whatever you like or even change the buttons place and now that we have this we're gonna click on it the last thing I think I should do is to name these components so this one is gonna be txt name and this one is gonna be txt surname so once we have done this we can click on the list view now add to list view button so that we can add more components so you can basically get the values first any kind of validation i'll leave that to you but technically if you want to get the data username equals to this txt name dot text dot to string you can put it up in here and call the function instead of my name of course you're gonna type your username and instead of the surname you can type user surname else you can basically show an error message so that's gonna be message box called show something like simple please enter your name and surname so we can go into the program now building the solution so what we can do now is that if I press on it it will say add your name and surname since my name is already there I'm gonna type something else I'm just gonna type Mike blue and add to the list and as you can see my blue is added you can keep adding as you like Johnny black and so forth so in this video I'm gonna stop in here in the next one I'm gonna show you more exercises on this video so I'll see you guys in the next video